the Acer Predator Triton 14 versus the Acer Swift X. Two 14 inch models from Acer at actually fairly close price points. And I wanted to help you make a purchasing decision. Now we're gonna start with the build quality and usability, then we'll move into the performance benchmarks later in the video. So hang tight for all of the details and comment below with any questions that you might have. Now, first and foremost, let's take a look at the weight and thickness of the two laptops. The thickness is going to be almost identical. I feel a little ridge, but a tiny, tiny, tiny bit thicker on the Predator Triton 14. And then from a weight standpoint, the Predator Triton 14 actually feels a little bit heavier. So if you're looking for a slightly lighter laptop on the go, I would pick up the Swift X, but it's barely noticeable. Now taking a look at the ports on the left side panel, we have a larger port selection from the Swift X. We have HDMI, USB type A, two USB type C's, and a headphone jack compared to the Acer Predator Triton 14 with your power adapter on the left side panel, USB type A, the USB type C. Now on the left side panel, we have HDMI, USB type A, and headphone jack from the Predator. And then we have a micro SD card reader and a USB type A on the Acer Swift X. But keep in mind, we also have a micro SD card reader on the front side of the Predator Triton 14. So ports are very close. You do have an additional USB type C port on the Swift X, but keep in mind that will be occupied by your charger. Whereas you have a dedicated power adapter port on the Predator Triton 14. Now from an assembly standpoint, they are very similar. I actually appreciate the attention to detail a little bit more on the Triton 14. I like how the bottom panel fits in to the side panels better on the 14 than I do the Swift X. Um, you can see here it has no catchy edges. It just, it's a well put together laptop. There's some like odd ways that the panels come together. You can see there's like a crease here. There's a seam right there where these are two separate pieces rather than one continuous piece on the assembly. And the bottom cover just sits in deeper into the side panels than I personally prefer. So from a build quality standpoint, I really lean towards the Predator Triton 14. Now opening the laptops done easily with one hand, no big deal there. You can see they open and close, but they also don't have a lot of screen wobble, which is super nice. You can see you open it, and it just stays in place. You can open the Swift X and it just stays in place. So really nice hinges, tight, but still able to open with one hand, which is really, really neat. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. We've been using Aura to monitor our personal information online for over a year now and have been able to reclaim control of our personal data. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. You can use my link by going to aura.com slash Ben G Kaiser to try a two week free trial to see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitor, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need all inside one app. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two week free trial with my link in the video description. Now the screens are an area where they both have really nice screens, but they're different types of screens. We have a mini LED for the Triton 14 and we have an OLED display for the Swift X. As you can see, we have a very reflective screen here. It's a glossy screen versus a matte screen on the Triton 14. Now on the screens, you can see that the Swift X comes with 394 nits of brightness at 100% sRGB, 96% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a 0.65 Delta E. Whereas the Triton 14 comes with 492 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.81. It really just depends on what you're looking for. Do you want glossy OLED or do you want mini LED matte display? Now the battery life is something that you might want to keep in mind between these two screens because you actually get a little bit better battery life 
on the Swift X, but it even has a bit of a smaller battery. So that's something to keep in mind. You can see we got nine hours of battery life for productivity and about seven and a half for streaming video playback. And then it tears down from that point for Photoshop and video editing. Whereas on the Triton 14, we have about seven and a half hours for productivity, six hours and 55 minutes for streaming video playback. And then of course, tearing down there for Photoshop and video editing. So battery life is gonna go to the Swift X. Now this actually surprised me because you have more control over the laptop in the Acer Predator Sense center. You have a lot of customization abilities with this command center versus the Swift X, which does not have a command center. So I expected being able to edit the fan modes on the Triton 14 to be a better experience as regards to getting better battery life, but I was wrong on that. Now, taking a look at the keyboard decks, I am definitely gonna push you towards this Swift X if you are a creator. We have a larger trackpad, full-size shift key. I'm a huge fan of full-size shift keys. If you haven't watched my channel long, it drives me nuts when they do these three full-size shift keys, like on the Triton 14. I always end up hitting the up arrow when I'm trying to type and it totally throws off. I start typing somewhere else I don't even want to. Drives me crazy, kills my productivity. I love a full size shift key. Now the keyboards are similar in feel. The keys on the Swift X have a little bit more of a soft touch feel, but they both have a medium key travel. Now, if you wanna hear what they both sound like, here's a quick audio sample of me using both the keyboards and the track pads. They both have webcams on the top bezel. Here's a sample of the webcams in use. This is the webcam on the Acer Predator Triton 14 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Acer Swift X and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And finally, speaker sample. Here is a speaker audio test for you to hear the difference between the two. Now the assemblies are very similar the way the hinges are configured. They both connect on the outside of this main center piece. However, the hinges sit more evenly distributed across the keyboard deck. They sit kind of below and then fold over where this, this laptop screen, the hinges rotates and then kind of folds on top. However, they both have this unique kind of way it tucks in there. They just tuck in a little bit differently. You can see the way that the hinge kind of tucks in and leaves this gap, whereas the hinge tucks in and really doesn't leave any gap. So just a kind of a difference in the hinge configuration, maybe something you're more comfortable with, or maybe you think might have more longevity based on the assembly. I don't have any strong opinions on which hinge I think would last longer. However, this one does look a little bit more sturdy just because there's like less movement. This is moving like this whole area where this is like a smaller movement. Again, I'm really splitting hairs on this one. You let me in the comments section which one you think would be a little more reliable. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of these two models, you can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now let's go ahead and dive into the performance benchmarks. The biggest differentiator between these two laptops is going to be the GPU. The Triton 14 comes with an RTX 4070 and the Acer Swift X comes with an RTX 45. 50. Now they both have i7 13700H processors with 16 gigs of RAM that are not upgradable. Now when it comes to both models, you can upgrade the one occupied M.2 drive. It comes with one terabyte for the Triton 14 on the model that I have. And then again with one terabyte on the Swift X model that I have. And you can swap that out for a larger drive or of course add a micro SD card to either laptop to boost the amount of storage you have inside of it. Now let's go ahead and take a quick look at single core performance inside of Geekbench. You can see these laptops are not too far spread apart, about 100 points difference between the two for single core performance, which makes sense being that they're toting the same processor. Now for multi-core for Geekbench, you can see that the Triton comes in above the Swift X by about 1500 points. So somehow they were able to optimize the Triton 14's i7 processor a little bit better than the Acer Swift X. Now looking at Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core and single core, we are neck and neck in performance. And then for multi-core, both laptops drop down the chart quite a bit, but the Swift X drops down much more. 
you got 15,257 points compared to 9,379, a big difference. But let's see how things react inside of the real world benchmarks. We're taking a look at Photoshop first. We have the Acer Swift X scoring an 856 and the Triton 14 scoring a 958. So about a hundred points difference between the two models. Now, I personally, I was gonna be using Photoshop a lot and I didn't wanna bring a mouse along with me, I would go for the Swift X even with that point difference because this trackpad is a much better trackpad than on the Triton 14. However, if you're gonna bring a mouse and you don't care about the smaller trackpad, then the Triton 14 might be a great pick being that it has slightly better performance. And the price difference between these two is pretty comparable um, depending on the model you get. If you get the RTX 4050 version, of the Triton instead of the 4070, you can get both for this model. You'll be basically neck and neck in price, which would make me recommend you go for the Swift X because of the larger trackpad. So the really big thing I wanna see here in the comparison is, is that RTX 4070 worth the extra price? Because otherwise, I would be aiming you towards the Swift X if you got these things compared at the exact same specifications. All right, next thing I wanna take a look at is the After Effects benchmark. You can see the Triton scoring the 883 versus the Swift X at 721. Uh, definitely gonna have an advantage here with that 150-ish points in improved performance over the Swift X. Now, taking a look at Blender Classroom, that RTX 4070 is really showing off, doubling the performance compared to the Swift X. So without a doubt, if you're a Blender user, the Triton 14 is worth the extra money and the smaller trackpad to have the performance you need to operate well inside of the program. Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks all going to the Triton 14 with the bigger GPU. Like I said, you can get the Triton 14 with an RTX 4050, but at that point, I do not recommend the comparison. You might as well get the Swift X with the larger trackpad. I'm seeing the big benefit of this competition here is that extra 4070 you can get with the Triton 14. Now moving on to video editing, we're taking a look at 6K B-RAW as the differentiator in performance between these two laptops because they both get zero drop frames for 4K playback inside of Premiere Pro. But as we move on to 6K B-RAW, you can see that the Swift X has 4,167 drop frames compared to the Triton 14 with its 120. Now taking a look at 6K red footage, 2,567 from the Triton 14 and 5,199 from the Swift X. So the fur 4K, both are good. For 6K, I'm gonna lean you towards the Triton 14. Looking at the export times, the Triton 14 wins out again at around 18 minutes for the 6K B-RAW export, where the Swift X had 26 minutes and 49 seconds for the export time. Now, another big win for the Triton 14 would be a two minute and 15 second export time, stellar export time, but the Swift X is not far behind at two minutes and 48 seconds. And in my opinion, 30 seconds is not a huge enough difference that if you like the larger trackpad and you wanna save a little bit of money, the Swift X would be a great pick for 4K video editing without a doubt. Now about a minute difference in the export time for DaVinci Resolve, five minutes and 17 seconds for the Swift X and four minutes and one second for the Triton 14. Which one would I personally buy? Now, if I was comparing these two models, I would not personally compare 4050 to 4050 because both models are available in 4050. However, the Swift X does not come in a 4070 variant, which is why I chose to compare the 4070 of the Triton 14. The reason being is if it was gonna be 4050 versus 4050, I would go Acer Swift X all the way because of that nice large trackpad, has better battery life, and even with a smaller battery. But if I needed the performance and I'm comparing the 4070 to the 4050, I would go with the Acer Triton 14 with the RTX 4070 if I needed that boost in performance. They both have great color accuracy and color gamut range and screen brightness. Should to get a little bit more punch out of this laptop, though it will be a little bit more expensive if you need it. It's where you should be putting your money. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your purchasing decision. I'll see you in the next one.